Psalm 149. 149. Praise to God for his salvation and judgment. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song in his praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise him, his name with the dance. Let them sing praises with him in timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify and humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in, in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, <clears throat> to bind their king with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. His This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Amen. And there's a lot in there that applies to us. Um, so, um, interesting opening here. You've all heard this before. I will say it again, and you'll probably just still be in as much awe as I am without, about it all. But um, <clears throat> just to, I'm going to be talking about 1965. Some of you weren't here. <laughs> I was 10. And uh, in this year, 2024, I will turn 69. So it's only been 59 years since that. And this is a checklist that Paul Harvey had read to everybody on the radio. And we were all glued to our radios back then, for sure. I didn't hear it, though, because it apparently was not on the station that played the Beatles or the Rock, uh, Rolling Stones. <laughs> so here we go. If I Were the Devil... Paul Harvey. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd wait to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I would have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I seized the ripest apple on the tree, which would be thee. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, and the old I would teach to pray after me, Father, which art in Washington— and then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting to, uh, so that anything else would appear dull and un uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest of us with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, church at war within themselves, and a nation at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of high ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellect, but, uh, intellects but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those wild run, wild at all times. Until before, you know it, I'd have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon, I could evict God from the courthouse, and then from schoolhouse, and then from houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion, and defy and devise science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I would take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what will you bet I couldn't get whole states promoting gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, and that you see on TV is the way it will be and should be. 
And thus, I could undress you in public and could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. So it's funny that this came up. Uh, um, uh, I, I, um, I heard it. We listened to it at a Bible study a few weeks ago, and it was just as valid, uh, valid today as it is back then, and uh, more so. And in those 59 years... What hasn't been accomplished? Oh. That's it. It's all done. So, and, and that's a short stretch of time. Now, granted, yes, I've been around for that long, so that makes me old. But really, if you look at like the the, uh, the age of our country, um, all the other things, it's it's just like it's done. And um, the sad thing is, is that most um, have not said much about it. We've been mostly quiet. And um, if you do say anything, you get, you know, head beaten by everybody around you saying that, you know, you're just judgmental. It's like, no, I'm just pointing out the obvious. But um, anyhow, uh, it, this also coincided with um, a Facebook page that I belong to. I, I, I grew up in a Strathmore uh, Levitt development and um, uh, in Matawan, New Jersey, before uh, Levitt started putting up the 2,000 homes that he did in, a, in Matawan. It was all farmlands. And um, uh, I just put out a blurb there. I said, hey, for your friend, my friends that I grew up with that were townies before we came and invaded your place, what was going on in your heads back then? And it's funny. It's like a lot of people were, were pretty candid. They were kind, but they were candid. And they were just like, you know, it was a bunch of people coming in from New York City <laughs> who were going to take over our town. And they had different cultures, they had different religions, they had different this, that, and the other thing. And I'm like, okay, well, guilty as charged. And uh, the funny thing about that, this is just a sidebar, is whenever you move into a new neighborhood, you, in your mind, says, okay, nobody else can move here because this is my place. But you fail to neglect to realize that the person before you said the same thing about you <laughs> before you came. So, you know, things are going to grow and stuff like that. But um, there were um, papers that came out that was about the neighborhood. So you know, automatically they had 2,000 people they could sell the, the, uh, the periodical to. And inside that periodical, there was nine advertisements for churches. There were people just randomly saying, Merry Christmas, have a fun year, and come visit us in our store. And it was just like everything was very much God-centered. In fact, some of the controversial things were going up is where are they going to put the new church, the new synagogue? And it was, it was people were vested in that. And so there's none of that anymore. There's a lot of empty churches, so there's not really much concern if you want to start a new church to say, well, gosh, I need a new church. It's like, well, pick any of the six or seven empty ones that are close by, and you can, you can probably get that. But We've always said this, as Charlie does the uh, uh, prophecy update, now, now the CG report, is that if you had brought any of the stuff that we're going to even talk about today, five years ago, you would have said, that would, no, what are you, nuts? That's never going to happen here. It has, and it will continue to happen, and we know that things are warming up for a rather fiery end, but um, the core of everything we've always learned here is not to predict, not to uh, try and say that we know who the... the uh, the Antichrist is and all the other good stuff. It's just like, you know, concentrate on the one thing that, that the Lord asks us to do, and I'm sure that'll come out in one fashion or another today with the sermon, is basically just tell someone else about Jesus, that your job is done, and just keep as close as you can to his word, which will keep a lot of the flaming arrows away from you. Maybe not all of them, but at least you'll be better armed to, to try. So anyhow, Lord Jesus, thank you very much for um, everything you teach us through your word. Thank you for this church and the effort that Charlie puts into it to um, teach us about every nuance of you from the very beginning of that word to the very end. And um, may we um, just um, appreciate what would be our first love, which is when we came to know you as Lord and Savior. If we could always keep that spark of sheer joy that we had back then and uh, keep it alive and hope to foster it in somebody else today as we tell them about you. And Lord, we just um, pray this in your son's holy name, Jesus, and please keep us warm. Amen. Amen.